All right, guys, here is the, the infamous Galapagos Island tomato update. Um, these plants were from seeds of three or four plants that I grew two years ago on my porch in, uh, at the beach. And uh, I, I grew a bunch of them this year. I grew nine of them this year, planted all nine of them. Great germination rate. And I sent some of these seeds out to you guys in contests that, that I did a couple years ago, or even last year. Last year? Yeah. Um, but anyways, the Galapagos Island tomato is, if you guys don't know, or go back and watch, I'll actually put a link to the first video I did on it. And the Galapagos Island tomato is actually a completely separate species of tomato that was found growing in the islands of the uh, Galapagos. And there's a few different varieties that you can find online, and some of them are pear-shaped, some of them are red. Um, these are the original ones that I, I had bought about five years ago from a rare seeds company. And uh, they're yellow, and they have a weird marble to them. And the way that the tomato meets the stem is different than all the other ones, uh, all the other tomatoes. And it's like a persicum cheese mani is the Latin name for uh, Galapagos Island tomatoes. And what's cool about them is they're drought resistant, they're salt, salt tolerant. Um, they're more cold hardy than regular tomatoes. I had these tomatoes growing all the way into December um, a couple years back. And I'll stop talking and just start showing them to you guys. But here they are. And they don't look like much. And that's there's a reason why is because they didn't grow up. They grew out. These are actually some type of maybe bush tomato. or I don't know if it's because of the soil that I have here or what. Um, but the other tomatoes that I have, the pineapple tomatoes I'm growing, didn't do this. But look at the branches. The first thing, I mean, there's thick branches. It's growing more outwards. These are all branches growing out here. And I've got a bunch of flower blossoms on here. And these are little yellow marble-sized uh, cherry tomatoes that have a little brown speckle to them. They're really amazing. They taste awesome. And... I've, I've talked to a few of you guys, and I know some of you guys are growing them this year. Uh, but these are the original yellow Galapagos Island tomatoes. Tradewinds, tradewindsfruit.com is the company that I originally bought them from. And even these ones, they're all bushy. And I grew these, these plants from a bunch of seeds that I saved, and I always save at least... Uh, seeds from three or four different plants to kind of get more diversity, I guess. I won't just save seeds from one fruit unless I buy it like at a farmer's market or something like that. And love it and want to keep the seeds. But um, when I keep my own seeds, like my sunflowers, I took a bunch of different um, seeds from different plants and mixed it all together. And that's what I do with all my tomatoes and everything like that. Um, I don't mix my tomato varieties up, but if I've got three or four Galapagos Island tomato plants growing, I'll keep seeds from all of those three plants and mix them together as a seed as the seed that I use for future growing. Oh, I just stepped on this one. Man, that thing's a bush. Look at this. This thing is more wide than it is tall. This plant right here. And 420 Homestead grew a cherry tomato in his garden last year. That like spread in like a 15 foot circle and that's what's cool about the cherry tomatoes they're more closely related to wild tomatoes and they don't need to be trellised um, they fall off normally when they're ripe when you've got big monster tomatoes yeah they taste good and salad around a sandwich or whatever but you have to support them you have to put a lot of work into unnatural work into just growing those tomatoes so if you want tomatoes that are low maintenance, that'll reseed themselves, cherry tomatoes are the best bet. You actually get more pounds of tomatoes per plant with cherry tomato varieties than you do with larger beef steak varieties and, you know, traditional types of tomatoes. <clears throat> Look at that branch right there. Yeah, I mean, this is how far up it's growing. And look at the branches it's sending out on each end. That's completely opposite of all the other tomatoes that I had. And it really didn't do this when I had it on my porch. So I don't know, I don't know what it's doing, but it, they're healthy as heck. I mean, if you look at them, 
nice and bright green. Nothing's really attacking them. They're flowering. And uh, this plant right here is probably maybe a foot tall and about two feet wide. From this branch over here to that branch over there. And these branches are only going to keep going in each different direction. So this whole thing right here is going to be completely covered in tomatoes. Like a big tomato patch. And uh, I'll get as many of them as I can. They produce a lot. So, yeah, that's a, that is a Galapagos Island tomato update. Uh, if you're interested in it, um, check out Wikipedia. Type in Galapagos Island tomatoes. I'll also put a link to my uh, first video I did down below. And uh, that's it. Galapagos Island tomatoes, guys. A very rare type of tomato. And uh, a lot of people are interested in it. A lot of uh, tomato breeders that like breeding tomatoes and crossbreeding them and making their own varieties are interested in this because of its salt tolerance and drought tolerance. The fact that you can grow them in really dry areas. So it's been pretty dry this summer and they're doing good. And I've got pineapple tomatoes over there that are doing the normal tomato thing. They're just a long stem with leaves growing on each side and they haven't really, they started getting kind of top heavy. But these are like wild tomatoes. Perfect for permaculture. If you want, I'm going to say it, Galapagos Island tomatoes are great for permaculture. Because they'll reseed themselves, they're a reseeding annual, they're low maintenance. You don't have to support them, stake them, do all that other stuff. They're resistant to a lot of different things. So, yeah. And they make a, in certain soils, they make a patch. You'll see here in a couple weeks, I'll do some updates on them. You'll see this whole area will be all Galapagos Island tomatoes. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you guys want to grow some, check out tradewindsfruit.com. And that's a, a company I've been dealing with for about six, seven years now, getting seeds from. Uh, before I even ever heard of rareseeds.com, uh, Baker Creek. So, thanks for watching. You guys all have a good one. Take care.